42 Doug has definitely become one of hip hop's biggest rising stars of 2020. The 25 year old rapper from Detroit, Michigan, blasted onto the scene back in late 2018 after his song The Streets, featuring Babyface Ray, garnered some attention from hip hop fans online. This ultimately caught the attention of Lil Baby and Yo Gotti, which led to 42 Doug signing a collaborative record deal with both Lil Baby's 4PF records and Yo Gotti's CMG label in early 2019. Ever since then, 42 Doug has had just about back-to-back -back hits, with the most notable being the two features he had on Lil Baby's My Turn album, on the songs titled Grace and We Paid. Grace was the first song to reach the charts and peaked at number 48 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts back on March 13, 2020. The song has over 57 million views on YouTube at the time of this recording and has spent a total of 15 weeks on the Billboard charts. We Paid, the second smash hit by Lil Baby and 42 Doug, also reached the Billboard Hot 100 charts and even peaked higher than Grace, reaching the number 10 spot on July 10th, 2020. The music video for We Paid is absolutely crushing it on YouTube, with almost 100 million views at the time of this recording. But even with all of this incredible success, 42 Doug has faced several setbacks in life, with one of them requiring Doug to spend six years in prison. Curious on what 42 Doug did to get himself in that situation? Well then, we've got you covered. Here is an exclusive inside look at the criminal history of 42 Doug. 42 Doug was born and raised in the dangerous east side of Detroit, Michigan. Although 42 Doug hasn't really given anyone much information about his life growing up, it was known that Doug was extremely social and was very into partying. But despite the most likely harmless partying, Doug unfortunately got himself caught up with the law back in 2010 after he was arrested for carjacking and felony firearms possession. 42 Doug was only 15 years old at the time of his arrest. But just because he was a minor doesn't mean that the court system gave him any breaks, because just a few months later, Doug was found guilty of his charges and was sentenced to four years in prison. Now, due to the fact that he was only 15 years old, I kind of doubt that he was sent to an adult prison and was instead sent to some type of juvenile detention center until he turned 18, where he would then be sent to an adult prison for the remainder of his sentence. That's just my theory, by the way, and is not confirmed at all. For all we know, he actually was just 15 years old, chilling with a bunch of grown men in prison. Anyways, while Doug was nearing the end of his sentence, he ended up getting into a physical altercation with another inmate, which led to 42 Doug getting sent to the hole, aka solitary confinement. For those of you who are unaware of what solitary confinement is, it's where an inmate is sent to a cell by themselves and is only allowed to leave for one hour of the day. That means 42 Doug spent 23 hours a day, completely alone, for three months straight. While in solitary, Doug obviously needed to find a way to entertain himself, and he did this by writing raps down in his notebook. Doug claims that his raps weren't any good, but during the one hour out of his cell that he had each day, he would rap to the other inmates who actually really liked his music. 42 Doug would continue to work on his craft throughout his entire stay in solitary, but once the three months was up, Doug found out that the altercation he had had with the other inmate added another two years to his prison sentence. The four-year sentence now turned into a six-year sentence in the blink of an eye. Now with nothing but time, Doug continued writing more and more and had several raps written by the time he was released in 2017. Once 42 Doug was released, he started to go to local recording studios around his area and eventually started to get the hang of recording songs in that type of professional environment. Several months later, Doug ended up dropping two mixtapes during the summer of 2018, titled 11241 Wayburn and 11241 Wayburn Part 2. Shortly after, his song The Streets, featuring Babyface Ray, started to gain some attention online, which landed him in California, where he just so happened to meet Lil Baby while playing a dice game called CeeLo together. 
This simple game of dice ultimately led to a solid friendship between the two, and Lil Baby invited 42 Doug to come to work on some music with him, back in Atlanta just a few weeks later. During Doug's time in Atlanta, he went to multiple studio sessions with Lil Baby, with one of them featuring a special and well-known guest, Yo Gotti. Gotti really liked what he heard, and expressed interest in signing 42 Doug to CMG. Lil Baby also had the intention of signing Doug to his own label, 4PF, as well. But instead of going into one big bidding war over him, the two decided to make this a collaborative deal which ended with 42 Doug signing to both Yo Gotti's CMG label and Lil Baby's 4PF through Empire Records in March of 2019. And for the rest of that year, Doug was putting in a lot of work for both labels. At this point, 42 Doug had nothing but greatness in his future. That was until March 10th, 2020, just less than two weeks after Lil Baby's highly anticipated album, My Turn, dropped, which had two viral songs featuring Doug. On that day, 42 Doug was arrested in Michigan on federal weapons charges. According to Detroit News, Back in November of 2019, federal agents received an anonymous tip that Doug went to Stoddard's Range and Guns in Atlanta and allegedly fired a weapon. Investigators ended up getting a hold of the surveillance footage from Stoddard's, which was enough evidence to arrest 42 Doug. For those of you who are unaware, Doug's previous convictions from back in 2010, when he was just 15 years old, made it so he legally cannot possess a firearm. It was also noted that once in custody, the authorities seized Doug's cell phone and found multiple photos of firearms, as well as large quantities of kush. They also allegedly discovered threatening text messages to an unidentified individual, as well as details about a Dodge Challenger covered in bullet holes being told from Doug's house. He was temporarily held in a Michigan jail without bond as he waited extradition to Atlanta, Georgia where the alleged crime took place. Two days later, 42 Doug had a court hearing where the judge granted him a $10,000 bond, but federal prosecutors ended up appealing the judge's decision and unfortunately won. This caused Doug to sit in jail for another five days until he was finally released on a $10,000 bond without having to be extradited to Atlanta due to coronavirus. As of today, this case is still ongoing but I have a solid feeling that the outcome will be in 42 Doug's favor. I think this because Doug was convicted of his previous charges when he was pretty young, and with his new successful career, the judge may just give him a little break. I'm not saying he'll get off completely, but maybe some supervised monitoring instead of jail time. But once again, this is just my own personal theory. Since his release on March 17th, 2020, 42 Doug's career has not slowed down whatsoever. He's amassed hundreds of millions of streams of his music and was even trending on Twitter just a few days ago. Doug is also free to travel despite being out on bond and has posted multiple pictures and videos of him on social media buying extremely lavish and expensive items such as jewelry from Icebox in Atlanta and one-of-a-kind shoes from Cool Kicks in Los Angeles. Overall, things are looking extremely good for 42 Doug, and I can't wait to see what he does in the near future. Hopefully his case gets put behind him as soon as possible, so he can focus 100% on furthering his career. Well, there you have it, the entire criminal history of 42 Doug in one YouTube video. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and even consider subscribing and turning the notification bell on so you can be notified whenever we upload a new video. Also, feel free to comment down below any suggestions on who we should do a criminal history video on next. That's all I have for you today. I'm out.